welcome to B News Weekly. I'm Linda McNamee, in for Phil Gallagher. Joining me on this week's edition is B News Director Rich Hosford, reporters Tad Stefanak and Robert Paris, Peter Brown with Weather, Gretchen Carey with Community Calendar, and Anthony Matos with Sports. Due to, announcement, due to an announcement by the Massachusetts Department of Energy and Environmental Affairs stating that much of the state is now in a significant drought, the town of Burlington announced on Tuesday a total watering ban. No automated irrigating of any kind will be permitted, a notice from the Department of Public Works states. Please limit your lawn and plant care to handheld hose only. No exemptions will be given for new sod or seed. Any person violating shall be issued a warning for the first violation, shall be liable to the town in the amount of $50 for the second violation, and $100 for each subsequent violation thereafter. What is allowed is watering gardens, flowers, and ornamental plantings by handheld hose only, and only before 9 a.m. and after 5 p.m., and applying necessary surface treatments such as washing exterior surfaces, such as paint, preservatives, stucco, pavement, or cement. No indication of when the watering ban might end has been given. However, the Drought Management Task Force will meet again on Monday, July 11th. Further, state agencies will continue to monitor and assess conditions across the state, coordinate any needed dissemination of information to the public, and help state, federal, and local agencies prepare additional responses that may be needed in the future, the announcement reads. Finally, though the town does have a limited connection to the MWRA, it is not large enough to avoid the watering ban. A project to help clean Burlington's water of the presence of chemicals, known as PFAS, is on schedule and should be operational by the end of the year, according to town officials. PFAS are a family of man-made chemicals used for nonstick coatings and firefighting foams, among a list of other products. Manufacturing of certain PFAS was discontinued in the U.S. decades ago, but they may still be used in imported products, and they are resilient and do not degrade easily in soil and water. And as a result, they are widely found in the environment and drinking water. As reported by B News in 2021, as a result of a new state drinking water standard, the town of Burlington completed testing for this family of chemical compounds. The results indicate the presence of PFAS in a concentration of 40 parts per trillion, or PPT, above the new standard of the 20 parts per trillion. To mitigate the problem, Burlington town officials, with the support of town meeting, are taking a two-pronged approach to provide safe drinking water, they are continuing a multi-year process of joining the Massachusetts Water Resource Authority, or MWRA, with a connection through Lexington with the eventual goal of discontinuing the Vinebrook Vine Brook treatment plant. They are also installing a high-tech filter at the Mill Pond treatment plant to remove the chemicals from the water taken in from the reservoir. In a recent interview, Town Administrator Paul Sagarino said the connection to the MWRA is moving along with work currently being done on the Lexington side. Sagarino also said the Mill Pond Filter Project is also on schedule and that it's a very tight schedule given the safety concerns over the chemicals. He said the Filter Project is probably the fastest moving construction project in the town's history and they believe it will be operational by the end of December. On Saturday, June 18th, the Burlington Town Common was filled with people there to fight cancer, support survivors and their families, and remember those lost to the disease during the 2022 Burlington Relay for Life. B News Director Rich Hosford was there and has this look. After going virtual during the pandemic, the Burlington Relay for Life was back in person this year, though it did look a little different. The event that is meant to support cancer survivors, caregivers, and those lost to the disease and their families by raising funds for the American Cancer Society was held on the town common. Rather than being an overnight event, they kept the program shorter, but no less impactful. Organizers said they were just happy to have people gather for this important cause. 
glad to have an event, whether it's in person or virtual. Um, it was a little up in the air on how it was going to go with, but people showed up. We were nervous. No one was going to show up. So um, I'm glad people are here. We're just so happy to be back in person, especially with the last two years. We weren't able to have Relay for Life due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Although our event looks a little, little different than it has in the past, not being at the Burlington High School, we're just really happy to be back in person and celebrating our survivors and caregivers and all of those who've lost their lives to cancer. The organizers also talked about the importance of gathering like Relay for Life, both to raise funds but also to give and receive love and support. It's very important to participate in an event such as the Relay for Life to help make a difference in all the struggles that people face when they learn that terrible news that you have cancer because it doesn't just affect that individual it affects their entire family so pulling the community together to help in a fight against that cause and also raise awareness is definitely key to helping fight it I always think it's strength in numbers and of course um, what I love about Relay for Life is it gives people an opportunity to share their stories um, so I think that when people think of cancer um, they just kind of think of the disease like Sandy was saying it affects more than just the survivor themselves it affects their families their friends and the community at large so I, I love that at Relay that people can share how cancer impacts them and help make a difference not just in their community but throughout the state and throughout the nation as well. Finally, Relay for Life events are always a mixture of somber remembrance, rallying attendees to fight against cancer, and a celebration, a combination that runs the gamut of emotions. The Relay is celebrate, fight, give back, right? So, um, like, we, we did the celebrate the survivors, so we did the, that lap, which is amazing. You know, we have to celebrate them first and foremost. Um, and then we fight, and we raise awareness, like she said, um, and remembrance is tonight when everyone gets super, you know, somber, like you said. It um, it's just gives people a chance to remember their loved ones, loved ones lost, and kind of just take a moment to remember them, appreciate them, and and honor them. From Burlington Town Common and the 2022 Relay for Life, I'm B News Director Rich Hosford. Thank you, Rich. The Burlington School Department has named a new Director of Special Education. Christina Ciccolini, who was made the Interim Director of Special Education for the past year, was officially appointed to the position during last week's school committee meeting. Superintendent Eric Conti said he wanted to thank Mrs. Ciccolini for her work this year as Interim Director and acknowledged it's a very challenging position because it impacts all classrooms across the district. Ciccolini began her career in Woburn Public Schools, during which time she achieved a master's in special education from Salem State. She arrived in Burlington approximately 16 years ago, starting off as a middle school special education teacher. After her first year, she became the elementary school team chair, working at all four schools. Wanting to get some secondary education experience, she became the team chair of the department at Burlington High School and then added department head to her resume. Ciccolini said she was happy to be named the permanent director. Here she is. So I'm, I'm very happy to accept the position of director of special education. I'm thankful for the opportunity to continue my role. This past year, I did a lot of listening to teachers, administrators, um, and parents. I, along with district administrator, administrators, looked at and reviewed data um, we also had a program review, which I'll discuss in a second. And as I listened and reviewed data, I began to understand the difficulties and impact that COVID had over the last two years at every grade level. And I'm hoping to support everyone in providing the best opportunities possible for our students moving forward. Finally, members of the committee said they were glad she was continuing in the role and that they would support her in what is a difficult job. Here is member Christine Monaco. Christina, congratulations on having what I consider the most difficult job in the entire school system and, and also uh, second maybe to the superintendent the most important job. You, um, in your position, you represent a large minority of students that are really dependent on you for their future. And 
when a when a parent goes to a meeting with you or other people that work for you, you either make their day or make them unhappy, very unhappy sometimes. Your job has a huge impact, emotional impact, on so many parents, so many families, so many grandparents. And I just want you to know that um, we're here to support you and I hope that you, I hope that you do a really, really great job. Sculpture and design educator Stefan Klemma, who has shown his work in regional and national juried ex exhibitions, installs the newest addition to the Burlington Sculpture Park. B News reporter Tad Stefanak went to check it out and has this report. The Burlington Sculpture Park is entering its second phase with some sculptures leaving and new ones coming in. And the first newbie is Ryby House. The New England Sculpture Association had a call for entries and I had seen their calls before on various locations. So I decided to apply this year. Burlington seems like a good venue. The Ryby House is constructed of fir. That's the interior structure that gives it its strength. The base is pressure treated and cedar boards for longevity. The coloring for the wood is stained pine. So it'll last quite a long time because it's coated with marine varnish. <laughs> The roof is traditional sort of two by four construction like you do any kind of roof and we have clabbered cedar because it acts as shingles to keep the weather out. So that's how it's constructed. The Ryby House name comes from our children, her, their friends when they were little used to play in this space out in back of a shed area that was kind of wooded and they had some lawn chairs and benches, some other stuff. They used to go hang out there and play. They were three or four years old and they had a name for that space which was called the Ryby House. So this is kind of a, a um, interpretation of, of that space. From the Burlington Sculpture Park, I'm B News reporter Tad Stefanak. Thank you, Tad. In other art-related news, while the war in Ukraine continues on, the students and faculty at Pine Glen Elementary School wanted to show their support by creating artwork to put on display in an AR format for everyone to see. B News reporter Varys Connolly has this report. With the war in Ukraine continuing on, the students and teachers at Pine Glen Elementary School decided they wanted to do something to show their support. Within the school, you can find several QR codes to scan using Adobe Arrow to view artwork of sunflowers by the students, the national flower of Ukraine. So we have taken the students' artwork as images on an iPad and then used the Adobe Arrow app to load those images onto an augmented reality scene. Once that scene is built, we've created a QR code to represent that scene so that that way any student or teacher can come up to the iPad for that scene, scan the QR code, it will load the scene of the student's artwork and it'll appear um, as if it was existing there um, when really it's in an augmented reality state. We really wanted uh, to respond to what was happening in the Ukraine. Um, we in Burlington believe that our students are global citizens. They are part of this town of Burlington as a community, part of Massachusetts, part of the United States, and part of the world. And we have many people in our community who are affected by what is happening in Ukraine. And we wanted our students to feel empowered. You know, art has that ability to make you understand other people, give you an little empathy for someone else and it also gives you the ability to create something and be proud of what you've made and give the world a bit of beauty. Pine Glen's message is always about being respectful and treating others with kindness and they hope that this showcase will help spread that message. We're all connected and art can be a big event for social justice and change. It can be something that everyone can make and participate in and even our smallest citizens are still citizens of this world and they have something to make and create and they want to be there for other people. I hope that the um, Pine Glen community and beyond here in Burlington recognize that we can come together as a community, as a school, to show our support for other citizens of the world that are in need 
demonstrate that we can have empathy for others and find a way to connect with others through art. Um, there was an intentional focus on using the sunflower, the flower for Ukraine, and the colors of blue and yellow to represent their flag. So you will see that represented in the artwork. So again, just to make connections um, and to bring a sense of empathy um, and a sense of belonging as one within this community. As their heartwarming art pieces spread throughout the digital realm, Pine Glen hopes that everyone will take their message to heart. This is Ferris Connolly for B News Weekly. Thanks, Ferris. The Burlington School Committee received an end-of-year update on an initiative to create a more welcoming and inclusive environment at Burlington High School and Marshall Simons Middle School during Tuesday night's meeting. They were given a presentation on the Advocacy Room, a set of virtual meetings attended by students meant to both provide education on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and to get their thoughts and feedback about what the district does well in these areas and where it can improve. The sessions were led by BHS School Adjustment Counselor Jacqueline Rogers and BHS Latin teacher Gregory Stringer and included 18 student participants. The 10 sessions throughout the school year focused on three target areas, curriculum, school culture and community building, and classroom culture and norms. During the presentation, a couple of student participants shared their thoughts and said they thought the program had great value though it would be better if more students participated. Here is one of the students. Um, so I think the advocacy room was a really great thing for a lot of students. Um, it taught me and a lot of others so many great things um, about like being, most importantly, I think being empathetic um, and like trying to look at things from another perspective or trying to understand um, things and, you know, especially thinking about what we say and how, how that impacts people. Um, which is why, you know, I really think the advocacy room would benefit from, or something similar would be, be beneficial to be spread to a larger crowd. Superintendent Eric Conti noted that the observations and recommendations that came out of the sessions from the students fit with the district's overall goal of promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion. Chief Thomas Brown is proud to share that eight members of the Burlington Police Department received the Francis A. Grandin Award, which recognizes outstanding contributions in the field of drug enforcement. The New England Narcotics Enforcement Officers Association recognized eight members of the Burlington Police Department for their contributions to the dismantling of a national drug trafficking organization. Those who took part in the investigation, Operation Midas Touch, were recognized at the organization's 51st Annual Spring Training Conference and Awards Dinner, held on May 26 in Newport, Rhode Island. <clears throat> the award recipients include Detective and Task Force Officer Paul Callahan, Detective Paul Glazer, Lieutenant Matt Leary, Detective Jim Hannafin, Detective Dom Grassi, Detective Amanda Santos, Officer Mike Minicciello, and Detective Ashley Daniels. The award honors Francis A. Grandin, a pivotal member of the Quincy Drug Enforcement Unit. Before his passing, Detective Grandin oversaw numerous undercover drug investigations for which he was commended for his exceptional work performance and professional leadership abilities. This award is granted to individuals who exemplify the qualities and standards set by Detective Grandin. Operation Midas Touch began in early 2020 when the Burlington Police Department arrested an individual in possession of a small amount of crystal methamphetamine. The eight members of the Burlington Police Department, in collaboration with members of DEA Boston TDS, the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives, ATF, Brookline Police Department, and Boston Police Department, discovered that the drug supply was linked to a drug trafficking organization supplying crystal methamphetamine, firearms, and other drugs across the New England region. In two years, investigators have arrested 27 people, written 32 notarized statements to be used as evidence in trial, seized more than $200,000, more than 150 pounds of crystal methamphetamine, a kilo of fentanyl, 
more than 40,000 counterfeit Adderall and Percocet pills, and more than 70 pounds of marijuana. Investigators also have successfully identified sources of supply in Mexico and continue to investigate. In the latest episode of our segment, Society and Community, we take a look at the importance of observing Pride Month to support the LGBTQ community. Let's check it out. June is Pride Month, a celebration of the LGBTQIA plus community and a chance for everyone to show love and acceptance for their fellow human beings. For this episode of our Society and Community segment, we spoke with the organizers of the Burlington Pride event on the Town Common about why it's so important to recognize the occasion. It's important, to just the visibility factor, you know. There's a lot of different types of people in Burlington and it's important for us to all know that we all live here, we all share this space and... You know, no one's better than anyone else. We're all equal. We're, we all have the same rights and liberties, right, to be here. So it's bringing awareness to maybe some of the more marginalized groups in town, like the LGBT community. And some of the commentaries last year was, you know, there were people that have lived in Burlington their entire lives and they still didn't know after 20, 30 years that there were, there was a community here. There were other queer people in town. So it's that is the main reason is just bringing people together the pair also spoke about how showing everyone they are accepted can change and even save lives a message of particular importance for younger people for us to feel excluded what it must be like for the children and the youth of the community um, and i would say that was a huge population who came out for the pride event wow. last year were the kids and the teens who really felt like they finally had a chance to be who they were out in public here in burlington i also happen to be a therapist for adolescents and and i can tell you that the numbers of suicides in relation to, to youth who identify as LGBTQ plus is, is insanely high, right? And it's because they don't feel welcome, they don't feel like they have allies, they don't feel like they have a place where they can be authentically themselves. So for that reason alone, it's so important that kids recognize they do have they have a, a community who supports them and loves them as they are and that they're okay to just be who they are. Kind of brings us back to the question of why it's important, right? You know, if enough people come out and show, hey, this is, this is, I'm part of this community and this makes me feel more welcome in town, that, that's how change happens. When we designed the flag and the sort of logo last year is everyone is welcome here in Burlington. Um, and we really want that to be the message. That's what, that's in our mind why we created this event is that everyone is welcome here in Burlington um, and that you just be you and you'll still be loved and embraced. Finally, they said that while they have been given permission to use the common for the event, they feel it would be better if the town of Burlington had official events to celebrate Pride Month, as many other communities do. We're really struggling with that this year because we've noticed um, every community around us, Lexington, Woburn, Medford, like literally our surrounding communities have done so much to embrace Pride Month in itself. They have flag raisings, they have the police involvement, um, and it really is town organized and town supported. Um, and it feels very much like it's, it's an us against them mentality where we don't have that sort of like, they may say, yes, we can do this. There's a lot of, no, you can't do that. But why aren't they the ones who are sort of initiating or reaching out to us to ask us how they can help us? Um, and like I said, it's 2022 at this point, And really it, all around the world, everyone embraces June is Pride Month, right? Um, and so it just feels like, why isn't Burlington, why isn't Burlington in that space where everyone else is? Like, let's get with the program. We go now to B News weatherman Peter Brown for a look at the latest forecast. We'll also check out the community calendar with Gretchen Carey to see what's happening in Burlington. Well, hello everyone, this is Peter Brown with Overture Weather for the next seven days. Here we are going into the very end of June. We are officially in summer right now. And as we start out our period on Friday, we should be seeing temperatures at this time of the year in the low 80s. And we're going to be, again, not too surprising here, cooler than that, like we've been over the past couple of weeks here in the Burlington area, especially if you remember this past weekend where temperatures struggled to get out of the low 60s on Sunday. A real chilly, raw feeling out there. Looks like we're not going to be seeing 
any of that type of weather, but looks like we're going to be getting more towards our average highs and maybe a little bit warmer as we head in towards your weekend coming up as temperatures get up into the 80s to near 90. Now, as we get towards the end of the period in the next Thursday, our average highs at this time of the year should be in the mid 80s. And again, we're going to be cooler than that. Looks like we're maybe five to seven degrees cooler than that. So a little bit of a cooling trend as we head towards the end of the period. As you notice with our length of day, we are at the absolute apex in terms of length of day. And as we head into summer, our day is going to start getting shorter. So as you go ahead, let's take a look at what the Climate Prediction Center is calling for us here in the Burlington area over the next seven to 10 days in terms of temperatures and precipitation. And looking at our temperature map, they're looking for us over most of New England to have about average temperatures. And that's what I'm seeing right now myself. It looks like once we average out that hot weekend we have and then a slight cooling trend as we head towards the end of the week, we are going to end up being about average. Now, as we look at our precipitation chances, Climate Prediction Center is calling us to have above average chances of precipitation. I'm not really seeing that, unfortunately, right now. Latest models just have us getting maybe a couple of spot chances of showers here and there, but doesn't look like anything right now significant to really water down those very dry gardens and lawns out there. So as we go ahead, let's take a look at those seven days of weather coming up. And again, starting out a period on Friday, temperatures a little bit below normal, but pleasant out there. A couple of showers here and there, but doesn't look like anything really to put a dent in any of those drought conditions that we're seeing in the area right now. Temperatures again in the mid 70s. Now, as we get in towards Saturday and Sunday, the temperatures are going to really heat up in here, up into maybe the mid 90s by Sunday. Very humid out there. Unfortunately, that's not going to bring with it the chance of much precipitable rain from the sky. So again, it looks like our dry spell is going to continue. And then after Sunday, once we get in towards Monday, we're going to see a slight cooling trend. Much cooler on Monday, the temperatures back down to the lower 80s. And then we're going to tail off a little bit, stay around 80, and then getting down into the upper 70s as we, we head in towards Thursday. And again, just really those spot chances of showers on Monday and Thursday, nothing too appreciable in terms of rain. So everyone, get out there, enjoy the weather, and have a great week. Hi, I'm Amy Poehler, and you're watching BCAT. Go Red Devils! Hey everyone, I'm Gretchen Carey, and this is your Community Calendar. On June 29th, from 7 to 8 p.m., the Burlington Public Library will be having a teen event called Paint and Pour. Registration is required for students entering 6th through 12th grade. To register, go to burlingtonpubliclibrary.org. Also on June 29th, from 5.30 to 7 p.m., the Burlington Presbyterian Church will be having a community dinner. Everyone is welcome. Meals will be free of charge. No donations of food or money are needed. Vegetarian and gluten-free options are available. If interested in setting up, cooking, serving, and or cleaning, email uplift at burlingtonprez.org. On July 4th, the 4th of July Committee is having their annual parade at 11 a.m. Everyone is welcome. For more information, go to burlingtonjuly4th.com. Thank you, Gretchen, and thank you, Peter. The spring sports season has come to a close after some Red Devil teams and athletes progressed far into the postseason. For a look at the end of the season action, we go to B News sports reporter Anthony Matos for this week's sports report. Hey everyone, I'm Anthony Matos, and this is your sports report. Bobby Contesian Jr. was handed the torch this past month as the newest head coach for Red Devil hockey. B News sports reporter Robert Paris spoke with him about his new position. has been passed down to Bob Concession and now his son Bobby who has been named as the new head coach of Red Devil Hockey and is looking forward to leading his team this coming season. It's been a big part of my life. Um, I'm excited and I appreciate the opportunity from um, Sean Hart, the athletic director and the other administrators at Burlington High and um, like I said I've been a part of this program for a long time. Um, 12 years as a coach, four years as a player and then before that as a fan. Um, so I'm really excited to kind of take over and get going. Bobby worked close with his father, Bob, who coached the hockey program for 35 years. He has learned a lot from his dad as a player and an assistant. He's run a really successful program, and I'm, I'm excited to kind of 
take the reins um, and put my own own stamp on things, um, but can try to continue the tradition, the legacy that Burlington Hockey has uh, has had over the last 50 or so years. I think one of the things that he was really good at is the relationship building, and I think that's such an important part of being a coach is to be able to develop those relationships. And I think um, that's one of the big things that I'll take away. Obviously, there, there's a lot of winning that happened, and I think um, it's because he built those relationships and, and really cared about the whole person um, and cared about our guys as more, more than just hockey players. And I think that, that that has really led to the success over his, uh, his 35 years. So I, I think continuing to build those relationships is really important, and, and, and I really look forward to doing that. Concession is excited to take over his father's position and is looking forward to seeing his athletes compete on the ice. I'm really excited to, to be behind the bench and to, to kind of to watch the, watch guys compete, um, but it's also about practices too, and I think planning good practices and making sure that um, those practices are helping guys get better and that we're having fun while we're doing it, um, with the goal to win hockey games and to and to develop players and and people. From the Burlington Ice Palace, I'm Robert Paris for B News Sports. Red Devil track athletes Eric Sakaya, Anthony Abbott, Anthony Mancello, Quinn Flaherty, and Rithik Prakash all competed in the New Balance. National Outdoor National Championship in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Prakash competed in the event's two mile and the 5K. In his performance in the two mile, Prakash finished in 27th place at a time of nine minutes and 25 seconds. Rithik came in fifth place during his 5K at a time of 15.19. Sakaya, Abbott, Minkello, and Flaherty were part of the 4x400 relay race as a team. Rowan came in 29th place at a time of 329.30. Congrats, gentlemen, on competing in the New Balance Nationals. We would like to wish the Graduating seniors, the best of luck in their futures. In addition, softball athletes Reese McLean, Cece and Bimbo Cassidy Suhu, Charlotte Willie and Madison King were all named Middlesex League All Stars this year. And Bimbo was also named Middlesex Freedom League MVP. She and King were also named Middlesex League All Conference. Catch more Red Devil action on our website at bcattv.org slash sports and check out our Twitter page at BNU Sports. It was a very exciting 2021 22 sports season as we had records broken undefeated season, state championship wins, and many other memorable moments. I'm looking forward to seeing everyone compete for the 2023-2022 to season. That's all for Eagle Sports Report. I'm Anthony Matos. Back to you guys in the studio. Thank you, Anthony. Another week, another photo to highlight. This week's photo shows a couple of young Burlington students lovingly caring for a couple school animals. It was posted by the Burlington Public Schools Science Center and features Nora and Fiona be reading a bedtime story to the center's turtles, Lulu and Myrtle, whom they are fostering for the summer. Bet that turtle will have a great summer break. We'd like to see your photos. These could be of your summer activities, family and pets, the weather outside your front door, or anything else you'd like to share. Email your photos to bcat at bcattv.org with the subject line, Photo of the Week. Well, that's it for this week's edition of B News Weekly. I'm Linda McNamee. Enjoy this brand new summer season. Have a safe and wonderful week. Good night.